Hello lovely formulators, this is Elman from Skin Chakra and today and as per your request I'm going to compare cold versus hot process emulsification. In the emulsification process there is no absolute winner so you cannot categorically say one is better than the other one. Each one of these processes has its advantages and limitations and which one you choose depends on several factors and we are going to discuss them here. So let's go back to the emulsification process first and refresh your memory. Emulsion making basically you have two immiscible phases usually an oil phase and a water phase. The oil phase in the conventional cosmetic making can be a silicone oil, can be a paraffinic oil, or in natural cosmetics we usually use plant-based ether oils and plant oils. These two immiscible phases are blended together with the emulsifier in one of these two phases. It is very often in the oil phase, but there are emulsifiers that you can add them or you must add them to your water phase as well. You blend these two phases and you stir them and homogenize them and either you get an oil in water emulsion or a water in oil emulsion. You can proceed through the emulsification either hot process or cold process. In a hot process, you need to heat your water and oil phases to a certain temperature and in the cold process, you usually proceed at room temperature. Cold process means at least room temperature and not lower than the room temperature. So which one? of these processes you can choose and you can go through basically at the first point depends on the nature of the emulsifier so your emulsifier defines whether you can cold process or not you need to keep in mind that every cold process emulsifier can be used in a hot process so if an emulsifier is a cold process emulsifier it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to use it in cold process you can hot process it but it is not through the vice versa so if you have a hot process emulsifier you cannot use it in cold process apart from the nature of the emulsifier the factors that you need to consider are energy costs and timing. Keep in mind that whatever you heat, you have to cool down again. So in a, a small scale, it's, it is not very significant, but in a large scale, when you are making tons and tons of emulsions, the timing, so the time that you need to heat up your ingredients, and then cool down your emulsion is a very significant factor, specifically during these hard times where energy costs are skyrocketing from an environmental and eco ecological and economical point of view, the cold process has advantages over the hot process, although it is not very significant in small quantities. In cold process, you can use heat sensitive ingredients from the very beginning, so you don't need to keep them for the cool down and for after addition, so you don't have any post addition, and uh, that is a plus factor uh, for emulsion stability. And as mentioned, you don't have any heating and cooling cycles that it is a time factor and it is an, and it is an ecological and uh, economical factor. In hot process, you are heating your oil and water phases and you are using thermal energy in addition to mechanical energy to create the emulsion. So this is a plus factor over the cold process. And basically, hot process emulsions are easier to preserve. 
Again, this is a factor that is not very significant when you are working in small quantities, but in large quantities, when they pump tons and tons of water from storage tanks to the main mixer, it is a very important factor. So the factors that you need to consider are time consumption, energy requirements, preserving efficacy, and long-term stability, which is again very important, no matter how big your batch is. In cold process, you are not using the thermal energy, so you need to compensate for the lack of thermal energy with additional mechanical energy. So as long as your emulsifier and other ingredients allow that, basically you need to homogenize for slightly longer period and maybe even at higher shear rate because you are using only and only the mechanical energy and uh, not the thermal energy. This is the Stokes e equation with R, which is the particle size. So the larger the particles, the velocity of creaming is higher. And uh, the aim of emulsification is to break the particles to as small as possible. So we want to create smaller interface particles. So this is achieved by mechanical plus thermal energy when we are uh, homogenizing, but in cold process, you don't have that thermal energy factor, so you are just using the mechanical energy, and so you have to compensate for the lack of the thermal energy. Here, you see two microscopic views of two emulsions, the left one with much smaller particles, and obviously much more stable, and the right one or the particles are much bigger and they have already coalesced and come together and the emulsion is less stable or has a shorter shelf life and uh, the, our aim is to create emulsions with smaller particles and more uniform particles. It brings us back again to the factor that in a cold process, you need a higher shear and slightly longer time of homogenization to break down the particles and create that uniform smaller particles. Preservation and contamination, as mentioned, is another factor that you need to consider. In cold process, you are not heating your water and uh, your ingredients, so the possibility that they have some contamination already, specifically when you are working with plant material, is there. But uh, when you are heating your water and your oil phase, um, a large part of uh, contamination is uh, already removed or deleted. In hot process, you need to add some of your ingredients that are heat sensitive after the emulsion is made and during the cool down. How much you can post add? This is a very frequent question and honestly there is no general answer to that. How much you can add depends on the nature of the emulsifier, depends on the nature of the ingredients that you are post adding their impact on the viscosity. So you may be able to add for a self-care emulsifier up to 10% uh, post-addition. Uh, for other emulsifiers, you can go up to 2%. It still depends on the nature of the ingredients that you are adding. So the best way to figure it out is um, experimenting and testing the stability. Uh, nobody can give you a general or exact response to this question and you need to test it in your system. So the next question is how hot is hot? So how high you are allowed to go or you shall go in a hot process? So one of the, the main factor is the emulsifier, so which temperatures does the emulsifier need? The other factor is the melting point of 
um, the ingredients in your oil face. Some emulsifiers are very forgiving when it comes to temperature, so you have a broad range to experiment or to uh, heat your uh, faces. With some of emulsifiers, they are not that much forgiving and you have a very narrow range for emulsification. So if you are slightly lower than that range or higher than that, uh, that, that range, either you have no emulsion at all or the emulsion will, will break very fast, very soon. This is another factor that you need to experiment with your emulsifiers and I recommend as always to start with a very simple kiss emulsion to figure this out. Another point is the melting point of the ingredients that you are using. So if your emulsifier works at 70 degrees centigrade, but you are using waxes with a melting point at 85, obviously you have to go to um, at least 85 uh, for emulsification because you want to have all of your oil ingredients uh, melted and in a homogeneous phase or when you are working with ceramides, with powder ceramides, you have to heat your oil phase up to 90 degrees to incorporate the ceramides in your oil phase. So these two factors, one is the nature of the emulsifier, the other one is the melting point of the oil phase. If you are just working with liquid oils, no butters, no waxes, no powders that need heating for incorporation, then the defining and determinant factor is the nature of the emulsifier. In best case, you heat both faces to the same temperature with maximum 5 to 10 degrees difference. So in small uh, batches, you can uh, and in laboratory batches, you can heat both of them in the same uh, water bath or in the same bain marie, so you have the same temperature. Again, uh, depending on the emulsifier, these two temperatures must be very uh, matching or can deviate. It depends on the nature of the emulsifier. With some emulsifiers, you can even have your oil phase at 80 degrees and your water phase at 40-45 uh, degrees, but in most cases and for uh, getting a stable emulsion, you need to heat both phases to a very narrow temperature range and with a maximum deviation of 10 degrees centigrade. So when you have a playing room for the temperature, when you are working with a cold process uh, emulsifier or an emulsifier that allows you to play with temperature in a very broad range, still you need to consider the impact of the temperature on the stability, on viscosity, on texture, and eventually on the color of the emulsion. In cold process, as I mentioned, you can use every cold process emulsifier in hot process or warm process. And um, although you generally prefer the cold process because of the energy factors and the timing factors, we need to consider the impact on the stability, on the viscosity, and on the texture. Basically, making hot process emulsions is easier when it comes to stability compared to the cold process. So cold process emulsions are more susceptible to instability, thermal and mechanical uh, instability. So this is something that you need to consider and uh, need to know that you can even use the cold process emulsifiers in hot or warm process in order to get a more stable emulsion. Specifically, if you are a novice formulator and you are not quite fit in emulsification yet, I recommend that you even use your cold process emulsifiers 
in hot or at least warm processes or make different variations at different temperatures compare the results to come to an understanding at least. So in this um, example, we are going to show you a water in oil emulsion that we prepared with NeoCare P3R. It is a um, cold process emulsifier that we are using and selling since I think about five years. It creates an amazing texture and skin feel. It is very forgiving and very easy to work with. And we have used it in the very same formulation, just played with the temperature. So I'm going to show you the differences in texture and in viscosity in the coming video. I shall confess that I didn't measure the viscosity because it is a great pain to rinse everything off after a water in oil emulsion. So I was very lazy and didn't me measure the uh, viscosity really uh, with a viscometer. I'm just going to visually uh, compare the uh, different emulsions and you will see that the differences are very obvious even without measuring the viscosity. So this is our first emulsion that we have made with the water phase at room temperature and the oil phase being heated at 40 degrees. So the, some of these cold process emulsifiers allow you to have uh, water and oil uh, phases at different temperatures and this is the one with the water and oil phase at different temperatures. This one has a much lower viscosity and it is quite obvious in the video and we have heated both oil and water phase to 60 degrees and you see that the emulsion is still nice and smooth and even stable but the viscosity is much lower uh, as it is both, both phases are uh, heated to 60 degrees. This one again has a high viscosity and very nice and smooth uh, texture and for this one we have heated both phases up to 40 degrees so it is a warm warm process and you still can use all of your heat sen sensitive ingredients from right from the beginning but the texture of the emulsion is really nice with the highest viscosity and the best stability and for this one, we had both oil and water phase at room temperature the whole time. It has a medium viscosity and uh, still a nice texture. So all of these emulsions are stable actually, uh, and all of them are have very nice texture. But when it comes to viscosity, uh, you have to experiment with your emulsions to get to a point that you find everything working for you. You have the desirable viscosity, the desirable stability, and uh, everything works perfectly in your formulation, in your concept. For us, the winner in this case was when we heated both oil and water phases at 40 degrees. It is not a hot process, so you can still use all of your heat sensitive ingredients from the very beginning. And uh, we have the best viscosity and the best uh, stability. So having said that all, I invite you to become a member of our membership portal if you want to learn more and have more access to knowledge or have your questions answered. So this is the link that you can use to become a member of our portal. The membership fee is really not very uh, high. It is less than one a euro per day so you cannot even purchase a cup of espresso with that amount but you will have access to me access to the knowledge of other members and uh, mastermind uh, during our monthly live chats and meetings so this is an invitation for you if you want to learn more if not then i'll see you uh, then in the next presentation.